Hey guys, welcome back to a new video which is about Gradle in Android. In this video, we'll see what Gradle is and what it does exactly when we are building our Android app. So now let's first start with some theory to understand what Gradle is. When you are building an app, it's like building a complex machine in which you need different stuff to actually get it built. What do you need in an app? You need some code files like Java files and Kotlin files. You need some resources files like images, layouts, colors, and then your configurations like your dependencies, your main SDK, and these things are all going to make your app be the way you want it to be. And Gradle actually takes the responsibility to take all those things and put them together, execute them in the right order to then build a well-functioning executable app, which is an APK file that you can install in your device or an AAB file that you can upload to Google Play. And Gradle automates this process and executes the right tasks to make this executable app. So these tasks can be compiling code and then assembling resources, running tests, and all these things are tasks that needs to be run in the right order, which Gradle takes the responsibility to do to then give you a final output that is your executable app. Now let's go to Underwood Studio and let's see the files that we got. So here, as you can see, in an empty Underwood Studio project, we have Gradle scripts, in which we have a bunch of Gradle files like this one, and this one, which both they have the same name, but we'll see what's the difference between them. And then we have this settings.gradle, we have this Gradle properties. And then if we go to our project view, we'll find this Gradle W, which stands for Gradle wrapper. And it's also an important one. So now let's just get started with the first one, which is build.gradle.kts. And this one is the top level Gradle file. And in this file, all we have here is some plugins. As you can see here, we have the Android application plugin and we have the JetBrains Kotlin plugin. We can have more plugins like Firebase or any sort of plugin that you want to use. You'll find them or you can add them right here. And then we have the second one, which is now the app module Gradle file. And this one we can have a bunch because now we have only one module, which is our app module. So if we go open again our project view, this is a module, which is our app module. We can have, of course, in a multi-module app, we can have a bunch of these. And so for each module, we'll have this one, a module level Gradle file. So in this case, we only have one. And let's see what we have inside here. Again, we're just registering those plugins that we had in here. And then here we have some specific configurations from our app, like its namespace, it's compile SDK, application ID, which makes an app unique in Google Play, the main SDK that we want this app to run in, and then the target SDK, the version code, version name. So these things are clear. And here we have some configurations. Here we have build types, and we can have actually a bunch of these, but I'm not going to go in details on these. We'll do that in a future video. Here we have the release build type, and in here we just specify some configurations that we want only in the release version of our app. We can, of course, have another one, like, for example, debug like this, and then we can specify some specific stuff for the debug version of our app. Of course, the debug is not going to be on Google Play, only for debugging. In here, we have the release. So here we say we want minify disabled or we can enable it by setting this to true, but only in the release version of our app. And we can have, as I said, a bunch of these. Here we have some other stuff like the compile options. So what Java versions we use, what JVM target version that the Kotlin is going to be used, do we want to use compose or not, and some other configurations. Here we have the dependencies. So the dependencies, of course, that the app is going to use or the libraries like Android X, we can have any ad stuff in here, any libraries, third party libraries, Dagger Hills, Camera X, and all those stuff can go right here in which we just define our dependencies. Of course, here I'm using version catalog in the latest Android Studio version. I have my dependencies and plugins in here in the versions. And then we also have this settings.gradle in which we can have libraries that we developed within our app or some remote libraries. And here we have, of course, the module, which is the app module that we have for now. In the, and this is its Gradle or build.gradle file. If we have more modules, then we want to actually register them in here. This is just the root project name, which is just the same as my app name. But of course, we can change this if we want. We also have this gradle.properties. We can just have some build config fields like an API key or so. If you want to secure those, uh, we can put them right here. And then if we go to our project view, we have now this Gradle wrapper file, which is actually responsible of downloading the right version of Gradle that we want to actually use in our app or our app is configured to use. And also this one is responsible for running the tasks that actually build the app or give us an executable app, as I said. 
And to see these tasks that this Gradle wrapper is responsible of, we can go right here. And then as you can see here are all the tasks that we have. We have Android tasks, build tasks, like to just build our app, to clean it, to get a bundle or an EAB. We have some verification, install, help, and all those tasks. And of course, if we also want to use them in our terminal, we can just go right here. We can write dot slash Gradle wrapper and then tasks like this. Here we'll get all the tasks that we have. So verification tasks, install tasks, and just the same as we have right here, as you can see. And of course we can run these tasks. So if we go right here, build, we'll see some tasks like clean, rebuild, analyze, and all these things are tasks. Run here, we have other tasks like run. And of course we can execute these. So of course, if we, for example, want to clean our app, we can just click on this one and then it will clean it. And that is just deleting the build file and then build the app again and creating a new one or we can just write dot slash again a gradle wrapper for example clean like this and this again will run that task or any other task that we can see right here we can run all of those from the terminal we can create our own tasks so let's actually try that by going right here we can create any tasks that we want and now let's just start easy by creating a simple task like task dot register we need a name for our task so let's say simple or actually this has to be a string simple task for example and let me just create some space down here and then we just define what our task is supposed to do right here we can do anything because now we're using the kotlin language of course our gradle can be in two languages which are groovy and kotlin groovy was used in the past it's still actually used but now we use Kotlin for our Gradle or to configure our Gradle dependencies and all those stuff. Now we use the Kotlin language. So now actually what you see in here is actually Kotlin code. In older projects, you might find Groovy, which looks the same, but you know, Kotlin is just better. We can specify something in here, like just print line and it's just print something like, I don't know, simple. We can now run our task by going again to our terminal let me just clean the terminal like this and then dot slash gradle wrapper and then write our task simple task and let's run it as you can see it prints simple so now we created our own custom tag which is of course a gradle task and we run that task and we get the output and it's literally the same when you click on clean or build that's just a task that is predefined by of course google engineers and that task is responsible of doing some stuff in the right order and then gives you an output which can be cleaning your app, building it or anything like that, running it. So yeah, that's what we mean by Gradle and these are tasks that can be in Gradle. So this is actually for this video in which we saw Gradle. So I tried explaining to you what these files do, what each one is for, and also what the entire Gradle thing actually is. And as I said, it's just a tool that automates the process of building our app, which is responsible of executing some tasks in the right order to give you an output. So this grid now tries finding the right things like your code files, your resources, your dependencies, configurations, settings, and all those stuff. Gradle puts them together, executes some tasks in the right order, and then gives you an executable app. Of course, logically, you can do all of this by your own by actually running the tasks by your own, just like in the terminal. But Gradle automates that for us and saves us a lot of time. And now we came to the end of this video. If you like what I'm doing, support me by leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing this with your friends. See you and bye.